let's discuss some of the general problems that origin of life uh, simulation experiments have encountered as they've attempted to simulate the origin of those four classes of molecules. What are, you have um, noticed that th th there's an awful lot of what's called in the field investigator interference. Can you describe some of the, the, the problems that have been uh, encountered under that heading? Well, certainly investigator inf interference means that investigators are doing all the work. And even with all the investigators doing all the work, with very intricate work, they have not been able to make any of the four classes of chemicals that are needed for life. Nobody, nobody has made the chiral lipids, the lipids that are needed where you have, have made the two enantiotopic hydroxyl groups of, of, uh, of, of glycerol. Uh, into in, it, you've been able to distinguish those two enantiotopic groups. Nobody's ever been able to control any of the stereocenters there. Uh, anything that anyone has made is is not homochiral, and even what they've made is with talking about interference is with this deep hands-on chemistry using many many steps that it's very hard for nature to use, and their syntheses are all cheated. They cheat at every step of their synthesis, meaning they will make They'll mix A and B, they'll get a series of compounds, they only want one in that series, and they'll identify a little bit of it, a very small amount, in a machine, in an HPLC. But they won't take that and carry it on because it's too messy. It cannot be used. So they'll buy that fresh material from a manufacturer that isolates that from cellular sources, from something that has, has had life already, and then they'll take that on to the next step, and they repeat that over and over again. So every and, and Jim, step is, that is to, cheating. Is that, to, is that to prevent what are known as interfering cross reactions? Then in the in in prebiotic synthesis, so you got a you you have a couple of reagents, you combine them, and then you get lots of byproducts. And if you allow, and maybe one of them is something you want, but if you allow that to continue to react with all the other things that have been produced, you're going to end up with a sludge or a, I think one of the products was called melanoidin in one of those reactions I remember studying. So you have to, you have to purify and remove those, uh, those other byproducts or else you just go and, and buy the one you want and start the next stage of the reaction all over again. Is that kind of what goes on? And That's exactly what goes on. They put upon early earth constraints that they themselves cannot even deal with. And with all their instruments, they will make it in such a mess that they themselves cannot even isolate it. But they leave this to early earth. That's early earth's problem, not my problem, they will say. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they, well, they won't say that, but they'll infer that, and then they'll move on. So every step is a cheat. Every step screams out that this cannot be the way that, that uh, early earth did this synthesis. Cannot. So, uh, and and e cheat? even with all their work, they have sure. never made homochiral material. Well, yeah, and let's talk about homochiral. What does that mean? I, uh, I remember from chemistry, you've got uh, amino acids come in left-handed and right-handed forms, and sugars come in left-handed and right-handed forms. Are all the four basic uh, uh, types of chemicals that are necessary for life, are they all chiral in the sense that they have, have two different types of forms or more? Yes, every one of them. There's, only, there's a couple of amino acids that don't have stereogenic centers, but everything else has a stereo center. Actually, there, there's, there's an amino acid that, has it, that doesn't have it, but everything else, all classes of compounds have this. All amino acids, save one. Uh, uh, all the carbohydrates, all the, the, the nucleotides are, have multiple stereo centers, not just one. And then the, the, uh, the lipids have multiple stereo centers. And they've never controlled any of those in any, any synthesis that's, that's prebiotically relevant. And, meaning and what that, does, what, yeah, what, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, what does that mean practically? Pre, why, why, are the, why do they need to be controlled? What's the, right, what's so prebiotic the relevance means that I cannot use the, these very sophisticated protection group schemes and catalysts that I've designed over a period of 150 years in modern chemistry, uh, uh, particularly in the last 50 years. We can control stereo centers now. We can do that sort of thing. We can separate uh, 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 these sorts of mixtures using our very sophisticated instruments. But when we say early earth would never have that advantage, then, then we have to use only the chemistry that would be available on a prebiotic, prebiotic earth. In other words, we're not using any of the sophisticated 
uh, uh, chiral inducing agents that, that we have available to us today in our modern laboratory. That's what I mean, that a synthesis that has prebiotic relevance. They haven't even made ribose. You, if you can't make ribose, you can't make any of it's the a, new... It's a form of sugar, right? It's a form sugar. of sugar. You, you yeah. can't make any of the, the, uh, um, the RNA or the DNA. You're done. You're toast. That's it. And so what everybody starts with, they buy ribose. And the syntheses that they have of ribose, they don't even use themselves. If you use very, very sophisticated hands-on chemistry, uh, like, the, like what John Sutherland has done, you can make ribose, but it is not homochiral, meaning that you have both mirror images of it. And, and, you, and yeah, and why is, that, why is that a problem? Why is if you have both, if you have both mirror images of the sugar or of the amino acids or any of the other fundamental molecules. Why, why, why is it a problem to have both mirror image versions of those molecules? Right. So if, if you don't have just the one mirror image rather than both of them, you cannot do the assemblies that you need to do to make the life type forms that you're going to need. And this is actually more recent work that's just come out in the last few years, uh, work by Ron Naman and some of his associates at the, at the Weissman Institute, that many people said, well, you know, you had stereo mixtures, you had the R and the S, you had the left-handed, the right-handed, and then over time it evolved and it purified. Cannot be. And what he has shown, there's something called chiral-induced spin selectivity, meaning mm -hmm. that if you didn't have this from the beginning, you could never have gotten this chemistry to work because these act as what are called spin valves. The electrons have to go down particular chiral environments, and when you have the mixture of isomers, it cannot work. So you have to have had the chirality at the start. It's not something that could have been evolved into. Mm -hmm. So you can't form a protein with a mixture of left and right-handed amino acids. You have to have exclusively left-handed amino acids, and there's an underlying uh, physical reason for that that is uh, necessary to, to, to forming a functioning protein. That is correct, because these proteins, as you know, are catalysts. These are the enzymes or the nature's catalysts for, for designing experiments. What we thought is that that all of this was just affected by the structure so that it, it, it would influence how something came into it, how a substrate came into a cavity. What we've learned now is that there are electron transfers, and those electron transfers have to go down the, the prescribed chiral environment. So you could not have had this without having controlled that stereochemistry to begin with. This is, the constraints get more difficult every year because we're learning about more about the cell and the chemistry involved in the cell. So the constraints become harder. So the task... And what, what's the, necessary to, to provide function then yes. for all of these molecules. Yes. Yeah. And so the, the, the origin of life researcher is, is for any step forward that they think that they have made, they haven't made a single step forward. For, for every step forward they think they've made, there are many steps back every year as we understand more about the chemistry that is going to be needed for a living cell. And this nonsense, Steve, this nonsense that people say, well, cells were much simpler back then. No, this has already been computed by biophysicists how simple a cell could be. The, the, what yeah, is the, the machine? Very important work on minimal complexity that's, that's right. established that, that that minimally complex cell is awfully complex in ways that are quantifiable. I remember your, your, your comments remind me, Jim, of... Uh, my last year doing a PhD work on origin of life biology, and my supervisor had just come back from the ISOL conference. And she said, you know, unfortunately our field is becoming populated by, by, by cranks. Everyone in the field knows that everybody else's hypothesis doesn't work, but they're unwilling to admit it about their own. That was 1990, you know, <laughs> and, so, and things have only gotten much worse in the ensuing 30-some yes. years. So um, I feel your pain.